Now, I'm fully aware there is a big difference of opinion surrounding Electronic Arts and their business practices on this channel. It's no secret that I've worked alongside EA on countless projects in the past, and I likely will work on more projects with them moving into the future. And I'm also fully aware that some people view that relationship as a conflict of interest when it comes to me reporting on the games that they make and remaining impartial whilst I do that. However, hopefully with this statement handed out by EA a couple of days ago, you'll be able to see they are capable of doing something good for the gaming community, because they've essentially shown all of their cards with this statement, and they've left themselves open to attack if they do make another big mistake, like they did with Star Wars Battlefront 2. So what's this all about then? Well, recently, EA had a shake-up of their executive board, and they moved some people around, giving them new roles and doubling down on some other roles as well. Now, a name you might be familiar with is Patrick Soderlund. He's the gentleman who took to the stage during the Battlefield 1 reveal and launched that trailer that just set the internet on fire. Now, he's been promoted to Chief Design Officer from his previous position of Executive Vice President of Worldwide EA Studios. This basically means he has greater impact over how EA's games are designed and implemented, including their post-launch support systems, which is the reason why I'm making this video today. Soderlund gave an interview to The Verge recently about the entire debacle that surrounded EA at the end of 2017, and some rather interesting points cropped up that I think are relevant to what's coming in the future. He started off by frankly admitting that the company got it totally wrong with Star Wars Battlefront 2 and its much talked about loot crate system which has since been replaced with something else. Here's what he said. We had the intent that was designed for us to have more people play Star Wars Battlefront 2 over a longer period of time. And like a lot of other games on the market, to be able to afford to do that, we had an idea of getting returns from that. But at the same time, we got it wrong. As a result, we had to take very quick and drastic actions to turn everything off, and we've since worked and redesigned the progression system. People seem to appreciate what we've done, players are coming back, and we're seeing stronger engagement numbers. People seem to think that for the most part, this time we got it right. It doesn't mean we'll stop. We'll continue to improve the game, we'll continue to push on these things, and we'll have to be very cautious with what this means for future products. I'd be lying to you if I said that what's happened with Battlefront and what's happening with everything surrounding loot boxes, these things haven't had an effect on EA as a company and an effect on us as management. We can shy away from it and pretend like it didn't happen, or we can act responsibly and realise that we made some mistakes and try and rectify those mistakes and learn from them. Rather a long quote there, but I wanted to make sure I got everything in. EA has publicly admitted their mistakes with Battlefront 2 countless times over the last few months, but their continued mentions of it in interviews shows that they really aren't shying away and pretending it didn't happen, which from my own personal point of view is good to see. It shows they're fully aware of the dented reputation they hold within the gaming community, and more work needs to be done to repair that. And Soderlund actually addresses this in his interview as well. He says the following, It's clear to us that players see the company differently than we do, and in that situation, as a member of the executive team, as the guy who runs all of the studios, I have to take that seriously. And we have to continue to listen and understand what's triggering that. We have to be very cautious of what we do. Now, of course, these quotes are coming from a company that is really no stranger to controversy. Think back to Mass Effect 3 and the issues surrounding its ending, SimCity and the always online DRM drama that sparked up, and of course, Battlefield 4's infamous release and subsequent 18-month repair period. EA is a huge company and has made some pretty big mistakes in the past, so surely it's the actions that EA take moving forward that matter the most. And Soderlund acknowledges this in his interview. We have to take action and show people that we're serious about building the best possible products, that we're serious about treating the players fairly, and we're here to make the best possible entertainment that we can. And in the cases that we don't get it right, we have to listen and learn from it, and be better. So then, with statements like that, what does that mean for future EA titles that they're going to be producing? 
Well, it's clear that EA want to try and distance themselves from that massive controversy at the end of 2017, not in terms of just not talking about it, because clearly they're acknowledging it here in this interview and have done multiple times, but more so in the products that they're going to try and create. They're going to try and put it behind them and come through 2018 with some strong releases that end up doing the right things for gamers. Things that the community surrounding those games would actually want to happen. Soderlander stated that both Battlefield and Anthem, which are games launching within the current financial year, sort of six and nine months away I believe, we will see departures from the systems that Battlefront 2 tried to implement at its launch, and will instead offer something different to monetize post-launch support of those games. Soderlund says the following on that point. We've taken significant steps as a company to review and understand the mechanics around monetization, loot boxes, and other things in our games before they go to market. For the games that come next, for Battlefield and for Anthem, players have made it very clear that we can't afford to make similar mistakes, and we won't. What I take from that statement is that EA has something different up their sleeves for their next two big releases. Whether they follow the industry's immediate footsteps through games like Fortnite and offer purely cosmetic microtransactions for character skins and models like they've done with Battlefront 2, or they try something different and maybe implement a Rainbow Six Siege style pass system that only grants early access to all of the content that can be unlocked for free by anybody playing the game. Game, that remains to be seen, but it seems EA is not about to try again and implement their pay-to-win, gameplay-affecting loot boxes into another one of their major titles. In my opinion, and I'm sure many other people looking at this, that would be business suicide. And considering how hard their stock price tanked in late 2017, I think we can all be confident that EA doesn't ever want to see that happen again. Now personally, for Battlefield 2018, I really hope EA and DICE will follow the cosmetic-only microtransaction path. That potentially would enable players to choose further customization options for their soldier while supporting the future development of the title. It's more of an exchange than anything else. If you want more customization, pay us a bit of money, you can have that customization and by the way, we'll invest that money into making more content for the game you like to play. The premium season pass model used for the last four Battlefield titles, I think, is wearing thin with the community. Players just don't see the appeal anymore of spending nearly the same amount of money they spent on the original title for future content, when it's likely that by the time that content is actually delivered, there will be far less people around to play it with. And Battlefield 1 is just a major example of this. Player numbers started dwindling down in early 2017, and by the fourth DLC launch in early 2018, the player base was so significantly depleted that hardly any of the original players were around to experience what had been added for them to actually play. So should the next Battlefield title be rid of this community splitting DLC system, all the maps, weapons, vehicles and updates then be handed out for free, I think you'd find significantly more people playing the game. And from EA's point of view, more people willing to dip into their pockets and drop some money on some cosmetic items for their soldier, which they invest time into by playing the game anyway. So then, EA is vowing not to repeat their mistakes with Battlefield 2018. But what do you think of all of this? Are you willing to give EA another chance to prove they can indeed not make a mistake again, or are you done with the publisher and unlikely to buy any more of their titles? Or are you simply waiting for EA to make good on their vow and see evidence that they have actually learned from their mistakes? Let me know down below in the comments section today. I'd be really interested to hear your opinions. And of course, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, drop me a like, or you can dislike the video if you didn't enjoy it. Subscribe for more Battlefield 2018 content, and make sure to turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. We have to be so close now to the reveal of Battlefield 2018, and of course, I will be all over that game when it launches. Turn on notifications, you won't miss any of my videos. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.